by the grace of God, there are going to be three slots of Bible exposition for me to deal with this issue. And so what I intend to do is not to rush or say too many things at a time, because what we are looking for in this uh, conference is not some more knowledge. We are looking for encounter. But there are three things that I perceive the Lord will have us to first generally talk about before we plug in the issue of integrity, before we plug in the matter of integrity of a man's life, integrity of his ministry, integrity of his message. There are people that maybe they have integrity of life, but their message has no integrity. They preach quite all right, but when you look at what they are saying, there's no integrity there. Perhaps some people might even try, but when you look at the whole concept of the understanding of the ministry, it lacks integrity. But this night, I would, I would like to introduce those three legs in which biblical effective ministry in the life of any man or any woman of God must anchor. Praise the Lord. And when I put it as three legs or tripod, it might be sounding very high. But again, as I look at the word of God, it's the simplest thing that Jesus began to say unto his disciples and to anyone who would like to follow him. So I will again come down to look at that as much as the Lord will permit me tonight. I would like you to follow me quickly to the book of Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. When you get to Matthew chapter 5, I'd like you to read verse 13. Matthew 5, verse 13, verse 14, up to verse 16. Matthew chapter 5, I'd like to read from verse 13 up to verse 16. Because you are familiar with it, I will trust God that you can follow me. But I don't want you to fail to open your Bible if you have the Bible. Because the Bible sometimes jumps as you are reading it. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. You wonder, say, but this is a passage we have known before. How do we bring that to integrity that we want to really discuss? But I want you to know that that is the basis of our demand for integrity. What is that passage talking about tonight? There's the third passage or the second passage I will refer you to and another one, three, before I close tonight. When the Lord Jesus Christ had called men and women that he was preparing to take over from him, he called them to the mount. This particular message was not preached to the multitude. All of you, you know that this particular message was what we refer to as the sermon on the mount. Am I correct? Eh? And if you go to chapter 5 from verse 1, you will notice that the Bible said, Jesus, seeing the multitude, what did he do? He went up to the mountain. And when he has sat down, his disciples, they came up to him on the mount. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying. So this particular instruction, he did not say it in the midst of the multitude that were looking for bread and fish. He was bringing this instruction to those that would become apostles of the kingdom. Those who would become the fathers those who will become the pillars, the ground, the foundation of the church that he said he will build, with the gate of hell shall not prevail against. 
this message was not for charlatans. It was not for those that are not serious minded. This message was meant for those who can climb to a mount only to hear him speak to them. This particular instruction, Jesus particularly was focusing on the men and the women that will provide leadership for his work after he must have gone. And when I look at the context of what Jesus began to say, it was very, very overwhelming that if we had understood what is the essence of the call of God on our lives as preachers, as pastors, as leaders, then anything that will contaminate our lives will be something that you will rather prefer to die than to allow. Are you hearing me? Eh? Now, look at Jesus. He looked at his disciples, those that he was preparing to become apostles, prophets, and teachers tomorrow. And he did not say, you are preachers. It pains me that what Jesus wanted us to know and call ourselves is not what we are addressing ourselves. It appears as if it's not clear in our mind what kind of men, what kind of women God wanted us to be. So there are too many other nomenclature by which we have identified or defined ourselves that is making the reality of who we ought to be to become obscured to us. So we have too many other issues, so many other topics to talk about and the crucial matter has not been addressed. Can you repeat verse 13 with me? You are the salt of the earth. Let me talk to somebody by yourself, just face him, and say, did you hear what Jesus said about you? You, you, point your finger at him, say you, you. You are the salt of the earth. It looks as if, as far as Jesus is concerned, the people that can stop decay, the people that can bring savour and taste and sweetness to the world that will continue to be corrupt are these men and women that he was talking to. You are the salt of the earth. Please wait for me. He didn't say you are the salt of heaven. Did you hear what I said? Excuse me. We will not need salt in heaven. We will not need your ministry in heaven. When we get to heaven, listen to me, there will be no more teaching. Nobody will tell someone to know the Lord for which I know him as he is, which I see him as he is, and which I be like him. Am I? Is that the Bible place? So whatever ministry you have to do, where are you going to do it? Here, here, before you die. But it was very striking to me that Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. I don't yet want to read the next line because the next line is very critical. I don't want to go there yet. You, you are the only hope for this world not to get rotten. You are the only agent that can bring savour and test to people's lives on the earth. You are the one that have been positioned to stop the activities of corruption, of decay, of destruction that goes on in the lives of men. I hope you know that salt does not shout in people's lives, then we have missed our ministry. Do you know that if you have any wound right here, boom, what I'm preparing you to be is what? The salt of the earth. But look at the Bible now. But if the salt loses its flavor. 
If the salt has lost its flavor, has lost its sweetness, has lost its power, what did Jesus say? This is the Lord. What did he say? How shall it be seasoned? It is then good for how many things? If you were to read that for me in Yoruba language, it's too serious. Only should be in Yoruba, sucking in Yoruba. Can you say, Konilarima? Oh my God. Did you hear the Bible? It said, it then good for what? For nothing. Konilarima? It is of no use for nothing. It's neither good for the ground, neither is it good for the dung hill. You don't know where to throw it. The only thing is to be thrown out and trampled on the foot by men. Oh my God. How terrible it is that a man will lose his flavor. Anything that you do, whether secretly or publicly, on the pulpit or in your house, that makes somebody say, hey. Anything that you're involved in, that when you stand up to preach, somebody is able to sit down behind, behind somewhere executing, so what will he say? Kunilarima. How many pastors are on the pulpit? Kunilarima. They only occupy space, but as far as heaven is concerned, they are good for nothing. As far as what God wanted them to do on the earth is concerned. How will you be preaching and fornicators whom you are supposed to confront and their lives will change? How can they be laughing when you are still preaching? Baba, something has happened to your life something went wrong somewhere I said salt don't make noise but you are now making a hell of noise and there is no revival there is no change Why there is no change? Your costume have improved. Your appearance has become more costly. You have become more sophisticated. But as far as heaven is concerned, sorry, brothers. You say, but I don't understand that Yoruba. Just learn it. So that when you are going, when you are going, even when you go back to Ebola land, face somebody they call Nilarima. Say, so what does that mean? That means it is then good for nothing. Any man of God standing on the pulpit whose integrity of life has dissipated, he has lost sabor, he has lost authority to confront sin, authority to confront corruption. Authority to confront family problem because his own family also is not going well. Good. But if the sword have lost its savour, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the donkey, but men cast it out. Either as he has to hear, let him hear. I wonder why Jesus concluded that chapter. He that has ears to hear. Let him do what? Let him hear. I pray that somebody will have ears to hear the word of God tonight. I pray that those of you that are sitting before the Lord. Thank you, my people, for watching, for listening. I hope you gained something. If any of these pastors have been spoken about against are your pastor, please. Put them in the bay. You just heard it from Bodagbila Kone. Bodagbila Kone is a man of integrity. I've known him for many years. He has not disappointed us. So, see you on my next video. Bye for now.